This week's message, given by Pastor Stephen Yun at the Sukkasana United Methodist Church, September 1st, 2019. The message is, Offering Sacrifices Pleasing to God, based on Hebrews 13, 15, and 16. Our scripture reading for today is Hebrews 13, verse 15 through 16. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to be good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Loving, gracious God. How can we thank you enough for your love and mercy? You always choose to meet us where we are and love us enough not to leave there. Send us your Holy Spirit this morning. Open our hearts and minds as we listen to the words of Scripture that we are able to see your guidance for our everyday lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So on his way home from work, Dad was wondering about how his children, it's actually the uh, twin children, Johnny and Sarah, felt about their first day of school. He called home and was pleased to hear from his wife that they are working hard on their homework. But when he arrived, he was astonished to see his son, Johnny, sitting on a horse, riding something. What on earth are you doing there, he asked. Well, our new teacher told us to write an essay on our favorite animal. And that's why I'm here, and that's why Sarah is sitting in the goldfish bowl. <laughs> May God's blessings and strength be on our children, our youth, parents. And teachers. If you love something or love someone, you would be willing to sacrifice or put up with the sacrifice on your part. You would give up something, usually something of at least some value. That doesn't mean you stop calculating and weighing. You still make sure that the good being gained is more than the good being given up. Like my two-year-old son who would give up an ice cream cone for a box of candy. Or it could be for more supreme, sublime values such as justice and reconciliation. So generally, sacrifice means giving up what we love, usually to get something of a greater value, whether it's acceptable or not. The same English word sacrifice used in today's scripture reading appears throughout the Bible, but the word is used in a different context, meaning a different thing. The word sacrifice, especially in the Old Testament, refers to gifts to God, such as animals and grains. And animal sacrifice were integral part of the ancient Judaism. And there were certain kinds of animals that could be given. And here are four examples. Not actually examples. Uh, four animals. Just think about, among these four, or four uh, animals, there's only one that could be offered as a proper gift to God in the ancient Israel. If you have, if you have to choose one, what would you pick? Just pick one. Anybody uh, pick a female goat? Okay. If you offer a female goat, it would be considered problematic because only male animal could be offered. How about injured sheep? Anybody, how many of you? Okay, of you. Injured sheep wasn't acceptable either because sacrificial animal had to be no blemish. Anyone pick the male pig? Yeah? No pig. Because it considered an unclean animal. 
Among these four, only a female dove. How many of you pick a female dove? Okay, got the right answer. <laughs> the female dove could be over, but remember, sacrificial animals must be male, right? But birds were exceptions. I presented this as a pop quiz, but the process of giving these animal sacrifices was so cruel, brutal, and I don't want to even describe it here. It would not sound like a pleasant activities at all. So given this biblical historical background, the word sacrifice comes with a very negative connotation to people living in a contemporary society in particular. We love animals. We live with animals. We, we respect animals their rights. It's quite puzzling and even terrifying for some of Christians to read about animal sacrifices in the ancient Israel and the fact that the New Testament writers also frequently use this word sacrifice along this line. But as I shared in my sermon two weeks ago, what's important in reading the scripture is to allow the Holy Spirit to bring us inside the story of how God related to the ancient Israel and the first Christian believers. Instead of treating their responses as an unquestionable model for our action, we need to carefully examine how people in the Bible responded and prayerfully discern how God wants to respond here and now. And this is how the story of the Bible becomes our own story. At a fundamental level, making sacrifice in the ancient Israel was their way to get closer to God. It was a means to bring themselves closer to God. In Hebrews chapter 13, which includes its final words, the author encourages the audience to offer sacrifices, but different kinds of sacrifices. Sacrifices that don't require animal killing, but are pleasing to God. According to biblical scholars, the letter was written for the first century Hebrew Christians, especially those who were struggling between traditional Judaism and the new religious movement initiated by Jesus of Nazareth. Although they accepted Jesus as their Messiah, they were struggling with this new faith. Oftentimes they found themselves sleeping back into familiar routines of their old life in a dominant religious culture. They were no longer worshipping with other Jews. They wouldn't participate in animal sacrifices anymore. But perhaps they were facing lots of criticism, objections from their Jewish counterparts. They still have a lot of lingering questions themselves. For example, Jews offered sacrifices on the on the altar at the temple to gain forgiveness of sins then how could Jewish Christians attain forgiveness without giving physical sacrifices at the altar so the focus of this letter is to explain that Christ is superior and completely sufficient for salvation it assures that Christ is the final and complete sacrifice for their sins Now, instead of offering physical sacrifices, they are called to regard praise and acts of service and kindness as sacrifices, something that they could offer anywhere and anytime. Offering this sacrifice not only brings them closer to God, but assures them that they were brought closer to God through Jesus Christ. Then what does this message sacrifice given to Hebrew Christians speak to us as contemporary Christians. Does God still want sacrifices from us in today's world? As we seek to hear God's voice through this letter to Hebrews this morning, I invite you to first ask yourself this question. In your daily life, are you truly concerned with bringing joy to God and offering sacrifices that are pleasing to Him? Are you really concerned with that? Are you really interested in it? I mean, we confess that God is the source and center of our joy. We pray that God may bring us joy, 
to fill our hearts with joy in our life struggles. A lot of times we find ourselves trying to please people around us and make them happy, but do you have a real authentic desire to praise and please God? Many of you know C.S. Lewis, one of the great three Christian thinkers and writers in the 19th century, I mean 20th century. He used to be an atheist, and he once said that there was a great stumbling block for him as he was beginning to believe in God. It was the presence of the demands expressed in the scripture, especially in the Psalms, that he must praise God. He didn't see the point in all this. For him, he seemed to portray God as craving for our worship like a vain person who wants compliments all the time. But later he sees why he was wrong. He notices that the world is ringing with all kinds of praises already. Like readers praising their favorite poet, like sports uh, fans praising their favorite game or player, or like walkers praising the beauty of countryside. He realized that the people delight to praise what they enjoy. How many of you have visited a beautiful spot during your summer vacation? No? As you see the beauty and magnificence of God's creation, you would want to share the joy of the experience, even with a total stranger, by saying, isn't it gorgeous? Isn't it beautiful? No one forces you to praise. It naturally comes out of your enjoyment. C.S. Reese discovers that all enjoyment spontaneously overflows into praise and that the praise not only expresses but completes the enjoyment. In the same way, offering sacrifices pleasing to God is an expression of our enjoyment of God. When we truly enjoy God, we come to please God with a sacrifice of praise the sacrifice of doing good and sharing what we have. The people of ancient Israel offered physical sacrifices to God to gain forgiveness of sins, therefore to bring themselves closer to God. We Christians to offer sacrifices not to gain forgiveness of sins, but to celebrate the fact that we were forgiven through Jesus Christ. So it's an outpouring of our delightful, grateful heart toward God. The author of Hebrews talks about two types of sacrifices that are pleasing to God. The sacrifice of praise and sacrifice of doing good and sharing what we have. To put it another way, that they're sacrifice of our lips and the sacrifice of our life. And this week I, I got an email uh, from one of our church family which reminded me of what a sacrificed lips would look like in our faith journey together. It reads, God has granted me a beautiful first full day of a United Methodist. I'm so very relaxed now that I am the person that God has made my path and I followed, now I am. It was a good example of how our sacrifice of praise would look like in our everyday life. I heard of a congregation that threw a pizza party, prayed for teachers in a local school, and for the first responders in its township. It's a sacrifice of sharing kindness that is pleasing to God. Those of you who serve volunteer for our church ministry on a daily, weekly basis, remember you are offering a sacrifice of sharing your time Gifts that is pleasing to God. Or our mission work. Our back to school drive, all the collections for people, for people served by social services, our sacrifice of doing good that is pleasing to God. Such sacrifices are pleasing to God even when they go unnoticed by others. As Christians, we are offering these two types of sacrifice that are pleasing to God. The question is their quality and frequency. Are the sacrifices you are offering something that has no blemish? 
If so, how often are your lips praising God and confessing God's name in Jesus? Or are your lips complaining about things in, in your life more frequently? Each moment we have an opportunity to offer God a sacrifice, a praise with our mouth. Even this moment of worship is a wonderful opportunity to praise God. When you sing and praise God with all your heart and with all your mind, you lift up sacrifice of praise that is pleasing to God. Remember our praise band or choir is not just a group of people who sing loudly enough to enable you to lip sync songs. Whether you're a good singer or not, whether you are out of tune, it doesn't matter to God. It doesn't matter to God. Because God hears not the quality of your physical voice, but the voice in your heart. God sees your heart, your grateful heart, your joyful heart, even your broken, contrite heart. Our God always deserves the sacrifices of our praise, but offering that sacrifice can be a real change when we are dealing with suffering, life tragedies that weigh us down. What's amazing is, though, that God embraces even our broken, grieving heart as a sacrifice when we bring it to the Lord with trust. It's also important to note that the sacrifice of our lips means more than just singing in a worship service or confessing that we trust in Jesus. You have an opportunity to offer God a sacrifice of your lips with everything that you say. But if you're gossiping about your neighbor, if you're slandering others with your words, your lips are far from sacrifice of praise that is pleasing to God. You are offering encouraging, supporting, and caring words to others. The sacrifice that is pleasing to God is being lifted from our lips. Especially, I want to encourage all the students in our congregation to offer sacrifice pleasing to God by sharing encouraging words with those who get bullied in your school, by standing for them, by standing with them. That's a sacrifice of your lips, sacrifice of your life that would please the Lord. Please consider offering a sacrifice of sharing your time by volunteering to help with our youth ministry or all Sakasani Day, which is this Saturday, even if it's 30 minutes or an hour of work. If you're nominated for a, new, for a position this year, I invite you to see it as an opportunity to Lift up a sacrifice in a new way. If you are serving in a ministries and find it challenging to carry on, see your role as a sacrifice that you offer to God. Last year I remember uh, reading a story of Mike and Jenny, a couple who runs a local pizza restaurant in North Dakota, and their commitment to feed the homeless in its community. One day the couple realized that the people were sometimes looking for pizzas in the restaurant's dumpster. So Mike, the husband, put up a sign in the window. It reads, To the person going through our trash for their next meal, you are a human being and worth more than a meal from a dumpster. Please come in during the operating hours for a couple of slices of hot pizza and a cup of water at no charge. No question asked. A year later, the couple started working with a homeless shelter in the area by offering more free pizzas. Although Mike was battling leukemia at the time, he was focused on how they could continue to help others in their community. Just over the two years, they have given away over 142,000 pizzas, slices of pizzas. Imagine God receiving those 142,000 slices of pizzas as sacrifices pleasing to him. Friends, as you go back to school, go to work, go out into our community this week, I invite you to discern what sacrifices you are called to offer God at this point of your life. Whether it's a sacrifice of praise, a sacrifice of doing good and sharing your time or your gifts, 
I want you to remember that such sacrifices bring joy to God, and we to find joy in that process. May God bless and fill each of you with a grateful heart that you may continue to offer sacrifices to God, even when it's hard and demanding, and even when it hurts. Amen.